Arun sir, please start. Yes, sir, of course. Good evening to all. I hope you all are having another day in paradise. Welcome to all the exuberant educators to the 143rd web training series of CBSE Bharat Sahodaya. Now I brightly present today's moderator, Ms. Himani Bhakshi. Ms. Himani has a decade of experience as a teacher of English language and literature. She's a master in English literature from the prestigious Lady Sridham College, Delhi University. She has been actively involved in promoting holistic education and experiential learning from the, uh, among the students. She is currently working at Moran School, Bhargamba Road, as the high school English language and literature teacher. She is also the subject coordinator of the middle and the secondary wing. She has rendered her service as observer in National Achievement Survey 2021. So Himani Mom, wholeheartedly, I invite you to moderate this grand session. Please, ma'am, it's over to you. Thank you so much, Arun sir, for your very, very kind words. Always, ma'am. A very good evening, everyone. Before we begin, I would like to extend my gratitude to Dr. Abdul Salam and CBSC Bharat Sahodia Complex for giving me this great opportunity. I also extend a very warm welcome to all the participants. It is indeed a pleasure to have each one of you as an integral part of the webinar as we embark together on this enlightening journey of discussion of important English examination strategies for grades 10 and 12 in the 143rd web training series. Continuing with its plethora of endeavors. The CBSC Bharat Sahodia community, along with today's remarkably talented resource person, Madam Malika Sen, will seek to provide valuable inputs in this session. With CBSC releasing the board examination 2023 date sheets for classes 10 and 12, the stress level of students, as well as teachers, has skyrocketed. The anxiety to perform exceedingly well is quite palpable. As teachers, we have an important onus, and that is to help our students cope with the pressure and ease out their exam-related worries. Examination pressure to some degree is needed for the students for ensuring them to perform better, but too much pressure for obtaining high marks by the parents and teachers sometimes becomes barrier and leads to mental blockage and low performance. A lot of people think that examination phobia is the result of under preparation for a test or an examination and fear of flunking the exam leads to a stressful situation for the students or a phobia. However, this is not entirely true as examination phobia has cognitive, emotional and physiological components. Fortunately, in today's session, we will discuss several methods that we as educators can adopt to reduce examination stress, which will not only help students to get higher grades, but also improve their overall mental health. Before we begin with today's session, there are a few things I'd like to brief you about. Kindly keep your device camera switched on for the session. Any query in the midst of the session can be conveyed through the meeting chat box. In order to have an interactive experience, you may clear your doubts by asking questions, kindly virtually raise your hand and wait for your name to be called out for asking your query. The participants will have the opportunity to receive certificate only after filling up the certificate and feedback form, the link for which will be shared at the end of the session. Kindly stay connected till the end of the session. At this juncture, on behalf of all of us present in the webinar, I would like to thank Dr. Salam for always empowering us with such enlightening sessions. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome Dr. Abdul Salam, the General Secretary of CBSC Bharat Sahodia Complex and the Principal of Prestigious, the Oxford School Trivandrum. Dr. Salam, is also the CBSC resource person and CBSC deputy training coordinator of Trivandrum region. 
Sir is the founder of BTAG, that is Bharat Transformers Academic Group, a consortium of educators and the teaching fraternity across the globe, connecting them together to empower the nation. So it is indeed a pleasure to have your gracious presence. And I would request you to take over and deliver the welcome address. Good evening. Thank you, Himani, ma'am. Uh, welcome back, all of you, to the online sessions, which uh, has resumed with uh, the 142nd session on neuroscience yesterday. And uh, on everybody's behalf, I take this opportunity to appreciate the thought put forth by Malliga Senma that this is high time that we help uh, the English community, the English educators with the strategies which are going to help the students score better marks. And uh, in fact, I was uh, very happy when she approached uh, with uh, this proposal of conducting a session exclusively for the English teachers. And uh, no other, you know, person can come forward uh, at this hectic schedule, you know, with uh, lots of uh, work in school and uh, at home. This is all because of Madam's kind-heartedness. So thank you so much, Maliga ma'am. In fact, uh, this is uh, exclusively focused upon uh, the different uh, sections of English, grade 10 and 12. And uh, basically, uh, students, I mean, during the pandemic time, they did not experience writing board examination. So they may have lots of confusions. They don't know how to write, how much to write, and uh, you know what are the requirements and uh, modalities. So this session will definitely help each and everyone. And uh, after this session, you will be in a position to help your students guide your students in a better way. I request each and everyone uh, to clear your queries here uh, with the Maliga ma'am. We will also try to answer and uh, please make use of this session and reach out to your students so that we, they can excel uh, in the examination, upcoming board examinations with uh, much uh, confidence. So thank you so much once again to Maliga Sen ma'am and uh, Shivani ma'am, Arun sir, and all the participants who have joined us and uh, special greetings on the occasion. Thank you so much. Over to Shivani ma'am. Thank you. Thank you for your kind words, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, amidst us, we also have the distinguished program collaborator, Mr. Biju S. Pillai. Mr. Biju S. Pillai is a treasurer of Bharat Sahodia. He has a vast experience in the field of education in many capacities, including being the principal of many reputed CBSE schools. Sir, we are honored to have your gracious presence amidst us. I request Mr. Biju S. Pillai to felicitate the gathering with his kind words. Uh, Himani ma'am, Biju has not joined. Please proceed. Yes, sir. So ladies and gentlemen, we shall now proceed to the highlight of today's webinar. Today, amidst us, we have very talented Madam Malika Sen. She's a postgraduate in English and education. She has been trained in integrated skills in English from Trinity College, London. Ms. Sen is also trained and proficient in Robindro Sangeet. Presently, she's working as the Senior Coordinator, HOD English Department and PGT English at Beechwood School City Centre, Durgapur, West Bengal. She has more than 13 years of experience as an English language facilitator, educator and trainer in various CBSE schools across the country. Madam Malika Sen is a personality development and communication trainer for students as well as teachers. She has conducted various workshops and trainings for educators for the best teaching learning environment. 
she has been conferred with the Guru Award for her extraordinary contribution in education. Ma'am has presented papers on plethora of social awareness topics at university level. She has been actively organizing and conducting many cultural programs at the university level. Ma'am, on behalf of everyone present, I welcome you and request you to take over the proceedings for the evening. Thank you so much, Imani ma'am. Am I audible? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, hello, everyone. Thank you so much, Salam sir, Shibu sir, Jayanti ma'am, Biju sir, and the whole team of uh, Bharat Sahodia again to give me the opportunity to reconnect with the teachers and my friends across the country. And a special thanks to Himani ma'am, meeting you after a long time, wishing you all a very happy new year. And another occasion is also there today. Today, various festivals are being celebrated across the country. So wish you all happy Bihu, Makasankranti, Lohri, Pongal. So, so many colors are spread already across the country today. So I feel this is a very uh, special day for me. Uh, and yes, once again, today is, uh, you know, when, I mean, uh, sir posted one message on the group that today is the day when we celebrate the Harvest Festival. And, you know, as an educator, sir, I feel that the best harvest for us are the students. You know, we sow the seed, we reap throughout the year, and we wait for the harvest season when the results are declared. So with this, uh, on this thought, let me begin the session. Um, thank you once again for all the, to all the participants who had joined this session with me. And I hope that I will be able to, uh, you know, clear many doubts which are already there amongst many of the English teachers. And uh, I'll try my level best to, yes, definitely reach out to each and every questions or queries at the end of the session and hope to have a worthy time together. Thank you once again. Imani ma'am, with your permission, can I start sharing the screen? Yes, ma'am, please. Thank yeah. you. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Is it visible, ma'am? Yes, ma'am. It's visible. It's visible. Okay, okay. Thank you, ma'am. So, uh, the first, you know, participants here. Good evening once again. I can see 144 participants. Obviously, we are also included into that. So, <laughs> along with that, the first question is, what is phobia? Phobia means what? Can you just, uh, participants are requested to answer it in the chat box. What do you mean by phobia and how many types of phobia we do have? Madam, ma'am, please uh, help me with the answers. Ma'am, first answer we've got is fear. Fear of facing something, fear of something indescribable. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then fear seeing hydrophobia. Phobia means yes. fear. So, yeah. Somebody has said so that there are many special. fears. Yeah, many kinds of mm -hmm. fears, phobias. Yeah, okay. Phobia means fear, right? And when we are afraid, someone should be there, you know, in our life. To hold our hand and take us from take us away from that fear, right? So that is very, very important. So whatever is a fear, hydrophobia or whatever, height, I am very afraid of water, height, many things. But personally, you know, I was never afraid of exams, which right now I see in my students. Reasons can be many, many reasons can be there. But this batch of 10th and 12th, this year, 2020. Uh, this session they are appearing this year this examinophobia sir had given this title to me i before i was uh, thinking that what to give the sessions name sir already had typed and given i said yes sir absolutely because this batch they had not given their board exams pen and paper so this is their first and last board exam we can say for the 12th grade and for the 10th grade they had still you know they are having two years time so phobia means fear, and this fear, who is going to take it out from them? For our students, obviously we, the educators. 
first the word fear should not be there in their mind and how it will be you know taken out we have to conquer fear every day proper preparation every day this is a word and if we see um, dear educators if we see in our school life it is not that we are only giving 10 year we are only giving 8 9 10 for preparing ourselves for 10th board or 11th and 12th for the 12th board if you see in the past we are giving 10 years plus 13 years to appear for the board and along with that we are again adding 2 years more 15 years for 12th so more than a decade we are preparing ourselves it is not that suddenly we are doing so the first thing is you have to conquer the fear and how to do that obviously you have to transform your fear into action proper planning time management be clear with the syllabus what to write how to write what is the weightage how many minutes i should give in a 3 hours paper how much time i will give for the revision uh, you know my presentation and with all means all these things cannot be perfect unless and until himani ma'am will also agree we practice every day in and out it is not that suddenly an english is such a subject which means ma'am also knows and i also know in our this 13 14 years i have seen english is such a subject where the children feels that it's very easy it's easy before one or two days ago i will take out the books i will read and i will get good marks but it never happens you know there will be a that fine line the difference between those 90% and the 70% ones so how it how will it happen right exam fear uh all the tips and you know so much of pressure pressure of getting percentage parents the days are passing away teachers are also having expectations you also have some kind of expectation and let me tell you you know english is such a subject again as cbsc says if you are failing then actually you are not going to the next level right so you have to let let about this word f a i l remove in some other box and let's focus only on how to prepare within these few days that are remaining now in our hand right is exam is just knocking at the door so now it's up to you there are two definitions of fear one as you can see forget everything and run away or face everything and rise as educators as i said the person who will hold your hand and take it out the fear from the students from the learners it is we the educators we have to help them and tell them that you have to face these type of exams and examinophobia there is no stop of exams in our life i feel my dear friends there are so many exams in our life still now i'm giving exams like sir was asking last week i think i had dropped a message to dr salam sir that sir i'm having one exam last sunday i had one exam that's in my presentation i'll share later so there is no end to exams and there is no end to learning so why to be afraid and scared and i know they are very young 16 years 15 years 17 18 they are very young but yes we have to tell them that you have to face the the real life and rise up and move ahead on this note let's begin with our subject for class 10 and 12 2022 23 session english language and literature the code 184 and english core for class 12 the code is 301 be very specific with the code and the subject's name that is very very important and as i said preparation is the key now to begin with the preparation as an educator we should be very sure about the question paper pattern the pattern of the question paper the weightage of the questions the syllabus the literature part the grammar part writing skill everything should be very very clear to the educators first and there should be no conveying of wrong message to the learners okay there should not be any point of confusion anywhere there might be the you know child you might say that okay children you can get the cbsc website you visit there you will see lots of uh, everything is given there sample question paper marking scheme uh you know the syllabus everything is given you can just log into the website cbsacademic.nic.in and you get everything over there but again let me tell you still the students will come to you and ask that ma'am what is the syllabus 
because your words are much more important than they sitting there and seeing everything on the website because there is a there is a relation of trust that my teacher is telling means that's perfect that's the correct one so first thing is preparation is the key uh, dear educators can you tell me how many sections are there in our question paper Ma'am, we have got answers three and four. I think okay. we have three sections. <laughs> Class 10. Okay. 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 Please mention the class and how many sections. Okay. If it is class 10 also, okay. I think there's a confusion again over there. Okay. Fine. Fine. So there are basically three sections in our question paper. Okay. Section A, section B and section C for both class 10 and class 12, all right? Section A is a reading section where you will be getting two unseen passages. I'll be telling all these things in details in the later half. Section B is all about writing skills and grammar for class 10. There is no section C separately for it. Only thing is they have mentioned the section B separately as creative writing skill. And again, it is written section B as grammar. So that is the thing. There are three sections only. For section C, literature for both 10th and 12th. And in case of class 12, make sure that you tell your children that there are no grammar questions from this section. They have to only appear for the writing skill part. All right. So basically three sections are there as you can see on the screen. Section A, reading. Section B, writing skills and grammar for class 10. And only writing skills for class 12. And section C, literature. So three sections are there, all right? Now let's see one by one each and every section. Uh, uh, dear friends, tell me, whichever classes you take, 10th or 12th, where do you find the children are facing the most difficulty in solving the answer, this question papers? Because right now I think pre-boards are over. Many exams they had already given, right? Which section you feel they are facing the most challenging part of the question paper? Ma'am, reading passage seems to be a unanimous answer. Hmm. That is why I have kept many slides from this section. <laughs> because the same thing happens with me. You know, reading section uh, is not that uh, a simple passage will be given and the answers will be directly taken out. We used to do in our childhood class two, three, four where you know, directly we will mark the answers and copy and paste it. But that was just the base level. Now the same thing cannot be there in class 10th and 12th. Obviously the difficulty level, the intelligency level, the checking of the papers, all will be changing, right, with the class. So yes, reading. The, so the first thing that, the first step that we will solve today, reading unseen passages for class 10 and class 12, both. Yes, the difficulty level will be a little bit higher for class 12 compared to class 10. Now, reading comprehension, how to do it? First and foremost, you know, whenever they are practicing, we still have time. Maybe the children are not coming to schools, but we are all connected with them through the WhatsApp groups. So try to send them one one worksheet, you know, one worksheet or sample question paper. And also my suggestion to all of you that next week you give them a date that by this date you finish it off, I'll be sharing the answer key as well. So that's very important. Only giving the worksheet and stopping and whether they are doing or not, we are not aware. And if you do, means I feel if we take the initiative, that children, you solve this within this date, I'm going to share the answer key. If we do it on a regular basis, the children will also feel that my teacher is really, you know, keen and she, is, she really wants us to do well. We have already done our part, I know. But till the last minute, till the last day of the exam, we still have our roles and duties. So I feel whenever you're sharing your um, sample question papers, please do share. And there you tell them that, you know, when you're solving reading comprehension passages, first and foremost, you have to get to the main idea. You have to know what is the central idea of that passage. It can be an, on employment. It can be on poverty. It can be on uh, uh, technology. It can be on science. It can be on um, our country, India. It can be on geography, history. Anything can be given because we don't know what will come. Wide range of subjects are there. 
based on which the comprehensions are given. So first thing is getting to the main idea. Second is some clues will be there. Tell them that don't get nervous. As I will say it again, that we cannot leave the question paper and run away from the exam hall. We have to face it. So some clues will be there in that context. Find it out. Find the clues with a pencil. You can underline also with a pencil, not with a pen. And infer to that particular context and note down the details. What is it talking about? So these four steps are very, very important whenever we are beginning to uh, solve the unseen passages or comprehension, as we say. In our days, means in my school, it was a comprehension. Now we say it as reading unseen passages. Thing is same, actually. And what are the skills? What is it that the marking scheme is actually given all these things? What is it that the examiner wants to assess the child on these two questions? First thing, first and foremost, the analytical ability of the child. You might have seen in the sample question papers in various guidebooks as well as CBSC website that there are many questions based on bar graph or you know assertion reasoning or um, a question based on whether it is true or false. True, false, the word seems very easy. True and false, I will do it just like this. But it is not that true and false, sometimes you know, not any one of them, true, neither true nor false. So lots of confusion will be there in the answers. What to select, especially for MCQ based questions. We feel multiple choice question means it is easy, but it is the toughest one, you know. Subjective answers are much scoring where the child, at least he is writing something, 50% marks he's getting out of two, he will get one mark. But in case of MCQs, there is hardly any chance of getting 50%. If you write wrong option, whole one mark gone. So we have to very, very particular that when you're solving your analytical ability, logical ability, logically, you have to think. The, you know, in the second passage, I will be sharing it with you in the next slides. Factual passages are given where lots of logical ability is tested, where some kind of charts will be there, lots of numbers will be there, percentages will be there, differences will be shown where logically you have to analyze mathematical reasoning is also required a little bit, right? So reasoning ability, inference power, where you are writing the answers, obviously you have to infer, refer to the sentence, the previous, previous few lines, the next few lines you have to check and then you have to find out the answer. That is inferring into in between the lines. Reading speed, this is very, very important. We keep on telling our students, you know, to read the books, read the books, read extra books, story books. Why is it so? So that your reading speed increases. If suddenly I have not read anything for six months and suddenly a question paper comes of 400 words, I will be stuck in each and every word and my clock will be ticking each and every minute. So I'll be stuck to understand, to read also the words. Reading speed is very, very important. A child who is a very good avid reader, he will quickly go through the lines and understand. But the child who is not so competent in that, he will take much more time in reading that same passage and solving it. So that's very, very important. Ask them to, you know, now, it is, now it's time to gear up. Now just one month is remaining for the finals. And then vocabulary power. Obviously, vocab vocabulary power cannot be increased suddenly in one month. It's an ongoing process, which we have been doing since class one till class 10th or 11th, right? Still. We have time, okay, try to solve more and more sample question papers, give, as I said, share more and more question papers with the students, give them the answer key and ask few students to whom you feel like these are the slow learners. They have not done well in my pre-board one. They have not done well in my pre-board two. There will be only minimum students, not the whole class, right? Out of 40, 10 students, at least as, a, as an educator, to get the best out of that student, these 10 students, I can make a separate group and, and help them. That's what I feel. Separate WhatsApp group and help them because they will not be coming to the schools now. Right? That's one. That's the challenge right now we have. So that is my suggestion. Now moving to the passages, there are two questions. Question number one and question number two. Discursive passage and factual passage. Now what is discursive passage? Smooth transition from one thought to another. Right? Uh, one thought means you will be confused a little bit. Like, what is the central idea? I'm not understanding. It can be the character. It can be the story. It can be the theme. It can be the message. 
so i get confused discursive passage this is what actually the motive is to make the child confuse and understand the central idea so there's a transition changes in between each and every paragraph one two three four whatever is there there's a wide range of thought is required into that and this is based on as i said contemporary topics cultural topics and social topics so discursive passages are the ones the first question as i said uh, needs to be very very uh, clear to the students and needs to be practiced a lot so a discursive passage can anyone please help reading in what this definition of a discursive passage can raise your hand and ma'am i can read this for you the participants okay. are muted Sure, sure. A discursive passage is one that has text that is argumentative, persuading, and interpretive in general. Thoughts or comments may be included as well. Rather than instinct, the students' reasoning abilities allow them to make the decision. Yeah. So, <clears throat> argumentative, dear participants, can you tell me these three words? What do you understand by this? Unless and until we understand. we cannot explain it to our learners so wh what do you mean by argumentative passage persuading passage and an interpretative passage what do you understand by these three terms ma'am the answers we are getting is argumentative can have many views they have to mm. prove their point yeah persuading i think our educators are brainstorming on the questions that you have asked them understanding by reasoning persuading is motivating understanding by reasoning that is what okay. what and the third one interpretative and persuading may try to push to one side one view point actually and uh, interpretative helping them to think out of box mm mm-hmm. I think argumentative and interpretive they have written it correctly. Persuading means the way I write or the way I speak, my readers also start thinking in the same way. You know that is persuading. Especially it is used for debate and all, where I I I try to take the audience in confidence. Yeah, it's like I convincing, whatever, influencing. Yeah, convincing. Whatever yes. I say, the audience also starts thinking in the similar way. So persuading. So these type of passages for us it is easy at times we don't know when we will solve we'll understand but for the children for we have to think about the children the learners the students for them it is difficult because their their uh, world is right now you know they are shaping it up so for them there are the limitations which we have to work upon we have to give them various different types of passages when we are sharing the uh, you know the sample question papers try to give passages which are argumentative one passage persuading another one interpreting another one so different types of passages should not be the same type of passage i'm giving and they are practicing then it is of no use right so discursive passage uh, as i said rather than instinct the students abilities allow them to make a decision to understand what it is all about now the factual passage factual passage comparatively it is easy than the discursive passage it is shorter because the length of the paragraphs will not be so uh, you know lengthy than the discursive passage it will be of hardly 300 to 350 words but yes here at times you will be getting charts in the question paper itself so it can be a pie chart it can be a bar graph it can be um, any kind of figure it can be a line graph as well it can be a table so that will be an advantage to the learners to get the answers all right so it is a comprehensive description of or we can say as well as clear explanation of what is written physical characteristic in the passage so good factual paragraph actually teaches the reader how to make a comparison as i said with relevant stuff like statistics information and so on 
right? So this will be comparatively easier to for the learners. So this one also we will do next. How to answer? Now, how to answer these passages? First and foremost, ask your students to read carefully, not to be in a hurry or look here and there. When they start reading the question paper, see 15 minutes bonus time, I feel it is already given by CBSC. If the exam starts at 10.30, the question paper is given at 10.15. So this 15 minutes reading time should be utilized to the utmost for the reading section because literature section already they know. They are prepared with the chapters. They're prepared with the poems. Okay, uh, even writing skill also, they're prepared with the format and whatever. But unseen passages, they're not prepared. This 15 minutes should be properly utilized to at least read the passages carefully before they start writing at 10.30. They, will, they should have a concrete view of what is the passages talking about, both the passages one and two. Answer should be to the point. Please ask your children do not to write extra, 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 because they might be losing their time at the last and they might be you, you know, in a hurry to finish the paper at the last and miss out some questions which they already know. So that will be really very, means we will be at pain as educators that if they, if they leave the answers and come and then they tell us that, ma'am, I was not able to complete the paper, right? So they have to complete the paper, tell them to write answers to the point, not to copy the questions. Few children I have seen in the answer scripts, they start copying the questions also and then they write the answer. So it is not required. Be very specific, write down the question number, number one and which option A, B, C, D, and the answer, right? Uh, whenever we go for evaluation and all, we have seen that, you know, children, few children we have seen, they, have, they only write the options, A, B, C, D, A, B, C, D. And they don't write the answers. Sometimes we, we always tell the learners that you write both the things. You write which option, A, B, C, or D, and then write the answer. Because in case if you write the option incorrect and you write the answer correct, the child will be getting marks. Okay, so it is for the learner's benefit, all right? So please tell your students that write question number one, Roman number one, then option A, B, C, D, whichever option in capital letter, and then write the answer properly, all right? Next, as I say, don't copy the words directly from the passage and summarize the whole paragraph properly. That what is it talking about, all right? Before you read, what exactly is reading comprehension? You should know that we discussed just now. And to solve the reading comprehension, there are two methods. This was taught to me by my teacher long, long ago. And I try to implement it again with to my learners. There are two, you know, verbs. One is skimming and the other one is scanning. Skimming and scanning. Now, uh, dear educators, tell me what do you mean by skimming? In two, three words, not in sentences. What do you mean by skimming? Ma'am, somebody has uh, written, uh, skimming is a quick read, quickly go through. Mm -hmm. Absolutely correct. Quick surface read. Yes. Yeah. Correct, correct. See, when have you seen the milk packets? Milk packets that come, you know, to our house every morning. You said, just see the milk packet. I don't know how many of you purchased that one. It is written skimmed milk, right? Skimmed milk. Skimmed milk means they take out the layer or the malai we say, you know, they take it out and then we get it. So the layer or surfacing, as someone said just now, to, surf, to get to know about the central idea of the passage. So the first time when the child is reading, quickly at a glance you read and you skim it out that, okay, this is talking about education or this is talking about unemployment, or this passage is talking about poverty. This passage is talking about uh, maybe uh, SWGs. So whatever, so for SDGs. So find out what is it talking about, skimming, and what factors contribute to this good comprehension is when you start your scanning process. Now, what is scanning? Obviously, deep comprehension, deep understanding. When second time I'm reading the passage, I try to understand what is it that the questions are asking me to find out from that passage. Underline the keywords like causes, results, effects. There will be keywords, okay? 
the passage cannot be so difficult that it cannot be solved. It can't be, right? So anyway, CVS is always learner friendly. So you have to find out the words, the causes, the results, and the effects, and then read the passage at least twice. So before reading, you find out the central idea, you skim the whole passage, and then you find out the questions. During the reading, you again reread it, find out the keywords, causes, results, and the effect of it, and then read it once again. After that, reading time always, as I said, improves the student's comprehensive skill. So reading also will help your, uh, you know, you in building the positive reading mindsets. So first thing is, as I said, first read, then skim, then read the questions, then again read, then find out the answers and start writing. Okay, that is scanning. Tips to solve unseen passages. So what are the tips? Read the passage quickly in one go, get the general idea of the passage. Secondly, read the passage so as to know the details. Now study the questions thoroughly, turn to the relevant part of the passage and try to get the answers. So this is how the methods you should tell your learners to apply whenever they are solving the reading passages. What are the do's? What they should do? Use reverse psychology. Reverse psychology means read the questions first, then read the passage and infer the central theme of the passage. So there can be two, two ways. One can be where you skim the passage, then read the questions and find out the answers. Second can be you read the questions first, then you read the passage, which I do not usually suggest, but there can be two methods of uh, solving the passages. So first, my suggestion will be to read the passage once, then go to the questions and then find the central theme and the answers. So this is reverse psychology. Don't, what you should not do. Do not overemphasize the details. You know, in the passage, you will see many things are extra, which are not required. Okay, that is not a part of all those 10 questions that you are attempting. So those are the extra details given. Don't overemphasize. Don't try to read again and again those parts. All right. Skip memorizing the passage. Sometimes children, they try to read the whole thing again and again. For 10 times, they are reading 10. Uh, for 10 answers, they are reading it 10 times. So they again losing the time. Right. You have to be very particular that, okay, I read the questions. At least you try to underline the keywords, as I said, and where I can find the answers. For 10 questions, there will be places where I will find the, all those 10 answers. So for each and every question, I don't have to read the whole passage once again. If you do this, 10 questions are there and 10 times you are reading the passage. Oh my God, you will see more than one hour you have taken for it. And that will be really not good for, you know, completing the paper. So do not overemphasize the details. Keep memorizing the passage and don't get stuck with words which are not questioned at all. Some words will be there extra, you know, which are, which are not questioned. So don't get stuck with the words. Now here, the most important thing is vocabulary-based question. That is the most uh, children usually say, ma'am, uh, how we will find? There are so many words there. All the words, sometimes we don't know the meaning. So how to find out? We get stuck with the words. Now, in uh, last year also, and this year also, you must have seen in the question paper that they are not giving these type of questions. Find out the word from the passage, paragraph number, this, the antonym and synonym. They are not giving, not giving. Rather, what type of questions are coming? They are giving uh, assertion and reasoning based questions or like one word is given, its opposite is also given, antonym, and another word is given and then they are asking to find out from this particular paragraph. All right, so a clue is given and be below it, if you see the sample question paper, below it, a clue is also given in bracket, right? So a clue is also given based on that they are finding. It is not that directly they are asked to find out the words. So it is easier rather, right? So again, I'm telling, don't get, so ask them how to solve the vocabulary questions, you know, ask them to underline the difficult words in the passage. When they are reading the second time, reading the passage second time, that time only ask them to underline the difficult words. Usually difficult words will be uh, the ones from where they will get the answers. Okay, that is again a clue for them. Steps to solve comprehension passages, read the passage carefully two or three uh, times uh, until unless you understand its subject clearly. I, I have told twice, but they can read it three times also, right? Until unless they, unless they understand it. 
then read the questions carefully okay find out whether you fully understand what the questions or the answers are being asked take up the first question find out which part of the passage it refers to next take up another question and then gradually write the answers okay and before you move to the next question please check the answers and then go ahead all right revision is very very important so as i said wpm words per minute you have to be a very good reader take uh, less time to read the passage and your you know this thing lip reading also sometimes help you definitely some children you will find that they are reading very loudly in the exam hall but that is also not recommended you know you have to read slowly underline underline the words using using your fingers or a pencil and yes you can give some subheading also okay subheadings like for maximum four paragraphs will be there all right in a one passage four paragraphs maximum so subheading also you can give that this particular paragraph is speaking about the uh, maybe the causes of overpopulation okay or the effect of overpopulation what is the result of overpopulation poverty brain drain so there are very various topics right now okay which are in uh, so like like this segmenting with the subheading is very very important then tips and techniques skimming as i said is used to quickly identify obviously then it is quickly looking through the text idea how uh, skimming is a process of speed reading as well visually searching the uh, main main um, central theme of that particular passage and scanning as i said again text quickly in order read it quickly in order to find the specific information okay a learner whenever he is solving first and foremost again and again i am telling needs practice lot of practice suddenly once in a while they cannot just sit and you know solve the unseen passages because passages will be difficult especially for class 12 okay and it is expected also 10th and 12th grade board exams if they are giving they need to at least comprehend analyze interpret infer these words our logical re reasoning are very very important not only for board exams any exams ahead any kind of uh, competitive exams we are giving whatever english passages we are getting we are doing this only you know it can be a job related uh, exam it can be for your higher courses it can be a professional course anywhere you go children uh, tell the child, your students that you know this will be carried forward that is why cbsc had made so many changes in the first section it is not like earlier you will just quickly get the answer and write it because these type of questions are there in your competitive exams as well okay so this the importance of reading section is very very uh, crucial at this stage all right so working on memory attention decoding the unseen passages required for your factual passage whenever there is comparison there is a graph given where the the figures are rising or there is or it is stable or sometimes it is falling so this analytical paragraph we have in class 10 so these type of passages are also given vocabulary sentence construction cohesiveness reading and conclusion the answer should be to the point to related to the question don't write anything extra tell your students to not to write anything extra write the answers to the point if required they can underline with a pencil as well all right pay attention to the significant details try to write your response entirely in your own words this is a very very important point please do not copy and paste please do not copy and paste from the passage tell your students to write the answer in their own words okay replace the words with some other interpretation other vocabularies other synonyms this will quickly give you full marks full marks okay to gain the answers read the questions attentively then return to the paragraph look for other possibilities if you're not able to search sometimes you know what happens we get stuck in one question and we keep on searching our children say that ma'am we are searching and searching and could not find so keep on so don't get stuck ask them to move to the next question because if they keep on searching at that time the the time will again pass away and they will be again missing the questions ask them to move to the next question come back again later what happens you know that sometimes there is a blockage in the exam hall we are writing and one answer we we get stuck we feel like no first we will find out this answer then only i will go to the next question and at times we the child feels nervous all right so ask them that if you are not getting okay fine you leave that answer leave the space 
move to the next question move next question later on you come back again try to find maybe later on second time when you are trying to find you'll get it quickly right so ask this this tips you should be giving to your learners all right prior to answering the questions determine the main idea uh, don't be bothered about unfamiliar terminology terminology yes many words as i said many terms we are not aware all of us here even we also are not aware we can get any kind of unseen passages but what we do we do lots of analytical uh, you know interpretation analytical reasoning vocabulary we try to do and solve it solve the questions uh, you know somehow so try, tell them that don't be afraid if some kind of topic is given which you don't know like women power sometimes gender discrimination these are very sensitive topics at times they they get confused last time it has come i think i don't remember which class 10th or 12th most probably there was a passage last time from cbsc right which was talking about the role of women in a family uh, last year in term 2 so uh, you know mark the words you don't comprehend to assist you in fully comprehending that passage okay take your time studying the reading answering the questions responding to him to it pay attention to the vocabulary words derive the meaning from the phrases and before you begin begin writing your answers be very sure and confident that i have understood the whole passage properly now i can easily write the answers okay and these are the words which the children they had they have to prove or they will be assessed on in the examination paper that how much they are capable of summarizing it of predicting the answers of visualizing very very important point for factual passage visualizing we i told you just now the factual passages are very easy compared to discursive one but why is it easy because a picture is given that is why because visualizing visualizing is to use the words the author has written to create pictures or some kind of uh, you know images in your mind so when we see a bar graph which is talking about uh, maybe the literacy rate of our country okay and the moment we see the various states and all that creates an image in our mind and that becomes easy to get the answers compare contrast which state has the literacy highest literacy rate which one has the less literacy rate that is why visualizing some children are very good in that and they score 10 out of 10 in this paragraph whereas they are not good in the first one discursive passage okay so it depends on the learners visualizing then connecting then infer summarize and then write the answers right evaluation based questions are not so much nowadays as it was earlier but now we do not have so much of uh, evaluation based questions text structure of informational text yes this is also information lots of information are sometimes given inside the text also it might be that there are no charts given in the question paper but in the passage only it is written everywhere percentage is there uh, comparison is also there contrast is also there in between the passage tell the children that don't be in this thing that okay factual passage means i will get a picture it is not that sometimes that percentage and the numbers and the data and the uh, you know the statistics are given in the passage itself so the same thing only the picture is not there so uh, they should be ready for any kind of questions to be solved in the answer sheet we do not know what will be given right so in this way the reading comprehension or the reading unseen passages should be solved for section 1 okay or section a right and for that 20 marks are there 10 10 answers they have to write the most important thing is there are no extra questions given this year okay so that uh, they have to check for class 10 especially 10 10 questions and 10 answers so they have to be very careful that if they miss out on any particular question they are losing one mark and each and every mark absolutely is important for their percentage right so that is one thing and um, for class 12 also definitely so please uh, take more and more practice for reading comprehension passages there are many all of you i think we are there in that english uh, group bharat sahadeya english group uh, and uh, if we are not there also yes as an english fraternity group we can share lots of question papers which we get amongst each other so that it helps the learners around the country and outside also right now let's move on to the next section section b writing skill now i'll i'll be asking a question to my 
uh, dear participants, right? For class 10, what are the two topics that we have in writing skill? And for class 12, what are the topics in writing skill? Ma'am, uh, unanimous answers uh, for class 10, analytical paragraph and letters on a given situation, formal letters. Mm -hmm. And for class 12, I could see somebody had written notice. Yeah. Invitation reply. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is what I've got for class 12. Job application. Hmm. Notice, invitation, letter, and report writing for class okay. 12. Yeah. Mm -hmm -hmm. All right. So for class 10, it's absolutely correct. Only two topics are there, analytical paragraph and yes, letter writing. Letter writing on a given situation, it can be formal. It will be formal, obviously, and it will be. It can be a com complaint letter, inquiry, okay, or an, an editorial letter as well. But uh, remember one thing again, dear educators, I think uh, the CBSC had not conducted yet any writing skill questions uh, based on analytical paragraph for class 10 because when it start when it was started two three years back and uh, we yeah 2020 i think we started with this topic and that year the board exams were cancelled right and then next year again it was deleted from the syllabus we practiced but it was deleted i think analytical paragraph last year right um, and this year am i right himani ma'am Last year, uh, analytical paragraph for class 10, we term, did. Two, term 2 did have uh, analytical paragraph because I remember it was a very basic question where two pie charts were given and they had to yeah. uh, write on that. So it was there. Last uh, last year, it was definitely there in the board exam. Term in two. term 2. Right? Yeah, 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 it was yeah. there. It was there. So this time, yeah. So this time, analytical paragraph in like an 80 marks paper, first time they will be giving. Yeah, right? yeah, so, 80. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. So in an 80 marks paper, last time it was 40 in term two. Now this eight, uh, first time analytical paragraph and letter writing, they already know. It's an easy topic for them. For class 12, we have four writing skills topic. Four questions, sorry. Four questions are there. All right. First, notice writing, which is compulsory for them to do. All right. Second will be invitation and replies. Again, a compulsory question. Options will be there, but compulsory question, short writing tasks. So there are two short writing tasks and two questions based on long writing tasks. In this long writing task, they have options. First one is the formal letters or letter to the editor based on any situation and all. And an option along with that application, job applications. So they have to appear on any one of these two topics, right? And the fourth question will be based on article or report article or report. Again, a choice is given. So ask your students to be prepared with any one of these four topics. The first one, as I said, letter to the editor or letter based on a situation. And along with that, choices will be there with the application for jobs. So any one they have to be very sure about and article or report. So basically, if you see, there are two, two, four, five, six topics we have to teach to each and every student six topics we have to teach and they have to appear for four all right so um we will go into it in details the weightage as i as you can see on the screen right now format is one mark content two marks organization of ideas one mark and accuracy one mark now earlier we had one term expression con format content expression so one two two now this time it is divided into two parts organization of ideas and accuracy it is same thing actually but we have to when we are writing the rubrics you have to tell them in this way that this is how you you are going to score the marks out of five each and every writing skill weightage is five marks for each so for class 10 it is 10 marks and for class 12 4 into 5 20 marks all right what is organization of ideas highly effective style capable of conveying the ideas convincingly 
so whatever the child is writing they are very good in using the vocabulary in such a way whatever they are thinking they are putting their uh, ideas into words and convincing the examiner okay there is no way of confusion anywhere secondly carefully structured content with organized information it is not haphazard the suddenly i remembered this and i wrote and suddenly you know oh god i have forgotten this part so i wrote it somewhere below before i uh, you know i conclude the whole thing article or report so carefully structured the child knows how to form that triangle and come to the conclusion all right so structured organized and information is written in a very very cohesive and aligned way third is highly effective register that is formal tone should be there too much of i me and uh, you know uh, first person is actually not formal so formal tone should be there tenses should be correct vocabulary these are very common terms all of us know here relevant appropriate sentences should be used for conveying the ideas precisely and very effectively precisely why they have to take care of the word limit for every question there is a word limit like for notice writing can you tell me dear participants for notice and invitation what is the word limit Fifty, fifty is the most common answer. Absolutely correct. Absolutely correct. And for article, report, letter, what is the word limit? Um, one twenty to one fifty. Yes, yes, correct. Absolutely correct. Analytical paragraph for class ten. What is the word limit? Hundred to one twenty. Yeah. And it is same for the letter writing the letter for class ten. Okay. Yeah, so they are writing hundred to one twenty for class ten, but the weightage is same, five marks for each. All right. So for the children were asking this question, ma'am, for uh, notice and uh, this also, uh, you know, we are getting five marks and we are writing only fifty words. So why not letter and this also fifty words will get five marks. I think okay. writing fifty words is more challenging. I am okay challenging. with hundred, hundred twenty any day. <laughs> Yes, yes, absolutely. Because they feel that word limit is more means I have to write more. Yes, but they do not understand the three points that I have highlighted here. That when we organize our ideas, it is difficult to organize it within fifty words, and it is easy to organize it within one twenty to one fifty words, right? And when we see the papers, we see them writing more in notice as well as in invitation, right? So that is the word limit. Be very precise. Tell them not to write extra and not to write too less also. Fifty words means I make it thirty. Please don't do that. Okay. And yes, accuracy one mark where you have to check the spelling, punctuation, grammar. You know, minor minor errors will be there, but anyways, they have to be very very particular about the rubrics here. Please share this with your students. Share this, or you can uh, you know take a screenshot of this and share it with your students that this is how you will be assessed on your writing skill topics. All right. So as we discussed just now, for class twelve, the weightage is more. The whole section B is on writing skill, twenty marks, five marks for each. Notice writing fifty words, invitation formal and informal, and replies both fifty words. I'll come to this once again. Third formal letter or job application. There is a choice between these two topics. Word limit one twenty to one fifty. An article or report writing again choice between these two topics one twenty to one fifty. Now, one question to my uh, uh, dear participants over here: Like for job application, there is a very common error or query from the students as well as many teachers here uh, that in job application where to write the closure, complimentary closure, very minor error, but where to write? Should we write it after the bio data or the resume or before it? What is your answer, dear participants? Where should we write it? After we complete the whole letter and the bio data, then we will write the complimentary closure or before it. Ma'am, common answer before. Before the bio data, right? Yes. So um, again, you know, bio data, CV, correct? CV, bio data, resume. Tell them these three words mean same. There will be many students who might not be knowing these terms, all right. And it can be anything given in the question paper. 
it can be cv also bio data also and resume as well so again same so complementary closure before the bio data starts all right this is one thing secondly uh, article or report 120 to 150 words article or report the first part remains same that is we have to give the heading center of the page byline the tagline by the reporter's name or the person who is writing the article only difference will be in case of report writing on the left hand side we are writing the place and the date with a colon so that's the only difference format in format rest the content definitely there will be difference in that right in article and report the content absolutely is different so we have to make them very sure that what is the difference three paragraphs we have to write okay the introduction and it can be four also depending on how they are um, you know creating their own writing skill it can be four paragraphs as well the introduction the body as well as the conclusion the body can be again divided into two parts in case of article as well as report right so uh, any doubts if you have we will definitely take the questions at the last all right for class 10 analytical paragraph again as i said first time in 80 marks paper they are going to appear this year right and formal letter formal letter i think many of them uh, they know how to write it okay can the participants write uh, the points how many points how you will you teach the students for letter writing which we say that they know it but still they do mistakes the points how will you write number one what should we write on the left hand side Um, left hand side, we write uh, the sender's address. Yes, number one. Number two. Then comes the date. Yeah. Now, when we write the date, should we write the word date once again, give a colon and then write? Yes oh. or no? No, no, no. No, right. But we get papers, ma'am, because yeah. still now we are getting papers like that, right? So the date word should not be there. Only the date, right? today yes. is 15 so 15th january 2023 like that yeah right? like okay, the, in the standard format we have to write 15th january yes. 2023 many Absolutely. students they write january 15 comma 2023 which is deemed as incorrect yeah that's what i uh, said third point in letter writing third point ma'am receiver's address that's the answer absolutely okay. correct now in receiver's address should we write to no we will not write okay the editor the manager the commissioner okay directly then in two three lines three lines maximum we can write it okay after that number four subject very easy question subject all right fifth <clears throat> then comes the salutation sir or salutation madam. sir yeah sir or madam please do not write dear okay yeah, dear. do not write um children they do write but please do, uh, ask your students not to write dear here we are no one is dear to us it's a formal letter right they will be dear when they sort out the issue <laughs> and ma'am i think when we call somebody as sir or madam as it is giving them the respect that is required Absolutely. in a formal letter so dear yeah, is redundant yeah. there so please don't uh, tell your students not to write after that the letter starts and that yes. you know how to start it right introduction and the uh, the main cause of writing that letter and such so last part very important first two parts i find the children are writing perfectly fine but the last paragraph they don't know how to conclude it you know they directly ask the editor to sort out the issue <laughs> it's not the editor who will be sorting the issue right the editor will be bringing that issue in the uh, newspaper or in his one of his column give the space in his newspaper the editor will not sort. And another thing, please don't tell your students not to write government should do this. Always government should do this, right? It should be a general suggestion. Very kind and very polite uh, tone should be there, right? So in that way, they have to uh, two lines. Do not extend too many things. Not write too many things. Then we make errors. When we write more, we make errors, all right? So ask them to write less, stick to the word limit. And then after that, your letter is over leave a line then left hand side what we will write how we will end the letter
somebody has written thank you but i think mm -hmm. we have done away with thank you yes 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 you, uh, we don't ask our students nowadays to write but if they write also i sometimes like uh, yeah we don't cut marks, marks not, for that yes no, marks it's are not, not there yes marks are and not reduced we are getting yes. answers as yours truly and then mm -hmm. yours sincerely i think faithfully is uh, not used anymore no. and uh, yeah we are getting yours sincerely yours truly for editor and yours sincerely yes. and in case a for student is writing to the principal then it is yours obediently yes yes correct absolutely correct right and in this also yours truly or yours uh, you know sincerely if you are writing make sure you tell your students there should not be any apostrophe awesome. before the s okay it's a very common error but uh, no apostrophe is to be used here because it's a pronoun we are using it's not a possessive right so yours uh, sincerely truly truly e should not be there again t r u l y it is t r u e l y so these are common errors which i felt i should just discuss with you all and in this way the whole letter gets over so letter writing if most of the students will be apply you know going for a formal letter for class 12 job application they are not so much confident into it because they have to write so many things in it they have to write the cover the whole format remains same they have to write the cover letter they have to write the bio data with all the names and all those things names details educational qualification experience um any kind of hobbies then references so lots of things they have to write many students they tried they will be applying for the formal letter okay the first one so these are the writing skills topic and the weightage as i have shared with you now now the third part third part means the same section section b but only for class 10 not for class 12 section b for class 10 is grammar grammar whatever topics are given like tenses subject verb agreement modals determiners whatever topics are there you must have done it in the class lots of practices so just ask your students to revise the topics as it is given in the syllabus and uh, practice many exercises based on the topics mostly try to uh, give them mcqs because multiple choice questions will be there on all the questions based on grammar what type of questions will be there fill in the gaps error correction transformation of sentences all right transformation of sentences means from direct to indirect speech or error correction obviously they have to find out the wrong word and then write the correct word sometimes the wrong word is given they have to only write the correct word that is also seen in the question paper all right changing the speech so these type of questions will be there but they are all based on mcqs okay multiple choice questions and as i but here they will be getting two extra questions so that is now one more thing you know uh, my dear friends that in this if they are getting extra questions my suggestion will be ask your students to solve all the answers okay not to go for selection okay 10 answers only i will write ask them to solve all the answers okay if the wrong ones uh, absolutely will not be taken the first 10 or whatever the 10 correct answers the evaluators usually we try to take it all right so ask the students to solve all the answers from grammar section now let's move on to the next section section c <coughs> that is literature section now here the question paper is of of uh, the question is carrying 40 marks the whole section 40 marks lot of weightage 50% of the question paper weightage is on literature now we feel literature means i am confident how how will you be confident dear students you have to tell them be ready with the chapters how to be ready with the chapters the name the author the poet the dramatist what is the theme what is the message who are the characters all right who are the speakers and what exactly is the flow of the story if these things are somewhere you know they have to map it in their mind that any question comes from this chapter i am ready for the answers that type of preparation is required not that i will make it in the exam hall in my uh, you know uh, i will think and write it by, on my own it is not possible the story line should be clear to you right and here you will see there are three type of questions three types of questions given right type 1 extract based questions and lot of weightage is given ha huh, on extract based, based questions as well 16 marks are there from for class 12 from this particular section so here extract based questions means 
it can be based on these points as i have mentioned here and for this the students they have to be very very thorough with the lesson line by line word by word every chapter should be read many times in this one month right and make sure that they are scoring the maximum marks here out of 40 at least out of 40 they should be scoring 38 39 that should be the that kind of preparation is required because this they already know we are doing it since march last year when the session started so it's high time now and this time to many uh, you know chapters are deleted also it's not that 100% syllabus is there because this batch they had not given for class 12 and 10th also like we started late and all so many chapters are deleted it's not the all the chapters are there not there right so ask them to read the chapters thoroughly all right type 2 short answer type questions which can be of two marks or three marks for both the classes i'm talking about 10th and 12th all right so three markers for class 10 and two markers for class 12 now short answer type questions what is it that cbsc is assessing here it is assessing the global comprehension of the main ideas that is there in the chapter and whether the child knows the proper sequence and the chronological development of the ideas if we, suppose if we talk about foot, footprints without feet chapter from class 10 from the book so there are so many it's an interesting chapter so many uh, you know events are there incidents are there where he is going and hiding somewhere then again you know he he gets almost caught by the uh, storekeeper and then from here he he runs away and he takes the train and he goes to a particular village and there are so many small small incidents happen right so the child should know the proper sequence and the chronological order that what all that scientist did when he did and what all happened the chapter seems very easy when we read but suddenly if any question comes from anywhere it can be at times confusing for the students okay so that's very very important and short answer type questions again the word limit over here is 40 to 50 words so in 40 to 50 words you have to frame the whole answer which is at times difficult all right so type 2 short answer type questions lots of questions they have to attempt there is a huge chance of scoring the maximum marks here from this question these type of questions third long answer type questions this is a place where most of the students face the difficulty and the challenge how to write long answer type questions because these questions are not directly asked from the chapter it can be a comparing and contrast question between two chapters right uh, between two poems so how will i do that long answer type questions basically talks about the theme and the characters the theme and the character and how you have understood the chapter in relation with your own daily life this role was actually this this role i feel should have been done by the english educators in the classroom throughout the year it like when we start the class when we do the set induction and when we uh, before we move to the chapter we first try to give an idea about the theme the idea the central idea of the chapter we just do not directly jump into the chapter and start reading we don't do that so you know that already very well that we first try to get the attention of the students and bring them to the main theme of that particular chapter or the poem now if you talk about aunt jennifer's tigers it is not talking about tigers right neither it is it talking about like how what aunt jennifer did with the tigers in the jungle no that is the first a uh, concept which which came in the mind of the readers it might be aunt jennifer is somewhere in the jungle and what she, but it is not it's absolutely not it's totally different it's talking about women power it is talking about the wishes the dreams of a woman who who tries to get something else from her life but she is already you know uh, in a in a relationship where she cannot come out for her everything even that ring and everything is heavy for her so to you know to share her feelings she is doing the embroidery work and what embroidery work she is doing she is bringing the tigers alive through her embroidery work because tigers are considered to be the bold and the ferocious and vibrant with yellow color and all so the theme the theme should be put, this is plot theme character turning point these things the english educators role play 
to tell it to their children because the children cannot analyze and interpret by their own. You know, when they are reading the poem, they will not understand all these things. Or when they are uh, maybe uh, reading this uh, uh, play, or this one, on the face of it, this another story, another story, they will not realize oh, that what is it? Okay, one old man and another a small boy, young boy, they met each other and he was trying to pick up the uh, fruits and he fell down and he died. Simple story. What is it? Nothing is there. But a question can be given in a very twisted way. Like how this relationship, uh, what is it that was similar between these two characters? So it was actually facing the reality. It was all about talking about building confidence. So the theme should be very much clear with the students. Unless and until that is clear, they cannot write this 10 marks or 15 marks or 12 marks long answers. Because here they have to relate to two questions or maybe two chapters, right? So if I, if I talk about uh, indigo, indigo is all not only about indigo cultivation, indigo is also talking about taking out the fear. We started the session with this word, fear, right? And what Gandhiji is telling to those indigo uh, sharecroppers that I should not be there always with you people. I will be going out from this particular place, but I want you to take the step and be confident enough to fight for yourself, to raise your voice. So that is what Indigo is talking about, the theme. That's very, very important again, right? So, uh, and with Indigo, we, uh, there might be some questions which will be relating to some another chapter from the syllabus, which is also talking about that, how to take out the fear. I hope you have understood which chapter I'm talking about. Can you just write it on the chat box? Another chapter is in class 12 syllabus, which is also talking about, uh, you know, not to be afraid and be confident and to overcome the fear. Ma'am, the answers that I can see here are same deep water. Yes, deep water. And the character, what is the name of the character, my friends? Douglas. Quick answers. Yeah, Douglas. Douglas, yes. Okay, and he is afraid of water. Like phobia, we were talking about hydrophobia. We started with the word, right? Yes, so he was so afraid, but you can see at the last, uh, at the end of the chapter, how he overcome all this fear and what he did. And he fought with himself, right? To take out the fear. So these type of questions where it will be, the questions will be twisted and uh, the child should know that what all chapters I have and what my teacher has taught me in the class, how can I bring those ideas in my answers? It is not directly that they will be writing. Please ask your students, again, I'm telling for long answers, six marks or five markers that don't write the whole story. If they write the whole story, some most of the time they write the whole story. What happened? What happened? What happened? This is, this has happened. And they try to show that I know the chapter, but that is not the answer. The question is something else you have to see. They will be losing the marks. They might be writing all correct English. They might be writing within the word limit, maybe organized and all. But the question, what is asked, that is not relating, not relevant to the answer. And they will be losing. Maybe they will get just one mark because they have attempted it. But they will lose out the all the four marks. All right. So tell them not to write the whole story. Please, uh, if required, give them the theme. We still have time. You know, we can make one mind map for each, each and every chapter as I, I try to do. So for each and every chapter, uh, last minute preparation or last minute as last minute tips, my suggestion, uh, my request to all my uh, friends over, uh, who are listening to me right now, for every chapter with your hand, means handwritten only, no need to use computer and all for everything. Each and every chapter writer's name, make a mind map. Okay, so how many, at least maximum 10, 12 chapters we have? Or 14 so you make a mind map and give it to your students with the that only you know in that mind map you write the character's name the plot the theme okay what is the message and what is the relation with our daily life that's very very important it is not that all the chapters the students are relating like aunt jennifer's tigers the student is not relating in his own life or in her own life but yes he might be relating it with some other women whom he has seen in his life it can be his mother, it can be his sister, it can be his aunt. He might have seen that how, you know, this theme is relating to their own life. And that is what is required in the answer. 
that whether the child can understand thinking beyond the text that's the first most important thing that cbsc mentioned child should think beyond the text experiential learning so this is how, how the child will be writing for every chapter please make a mind map give it to your students handwritten handwritten only no issues right they will just turn the pages and get ready last minute preparation all right so these are the techniques some techniques which i told you now uh, the parameters for the answers for literature section for class 12 40 to 50 words content one mark expression one mark total two marks all right 40 to 50 words and for 120 to 150 words long answers content two expression two accuracy one content means obviously it should be relevant to the question expression means how the child is expressing himself or herself with correct uh, uh, you know tenses and the flow and the organization and all those things and accuracy will be spelling grammar all so total five marks for 120 to 150 words long answers class 10 same thing but they have three markers question okay remember one thing class 12 they have two marks for class 10 the short question answers are of three marks where they have two marks for content and it's for expression one 40 to 50 words all right and for long question answers they have five marks content three expression two just a minute yeah okay so these are the weightage for the literature question answers now almost we are done with the whole paper pattern okay and now how to write perfect answers in the board exam uh, invest. I have written 2022 because this is 22 23 session. That's why I have written 22. Invest time in reading your question paper, which I have already told in the beginning of the session. First 15 minutes, the reading time should be utilized properly. All right. That time should be the time when you select the answers because there are there will be choices in short question answers, there will be choices in your reference to the context, there will be choices in long question answers, there will be choices in writing skill. So there will be lots of questions which are extra, which you need to select. Now, don't you say that I will write all the question answers. Not possible, right? It's not possible. You have to make the choices. So in the very beginning, reading section, you leave out. Okay, writing section, quickly make the choices. For every topic, there will, there will be two questions. Notice writing, two questions. Art, article and report, one, one, you have to select one. Letter writing, job application, you have to select one. Right, so reading time only, quickly make the choices. Even reference to the context also. So many questions will be there. Okay, where extract based questions. And you have to quickly circle or take the attempted questions. After you give importance to even a one mark question, write in agreement with the marks, write neat and clear answers. Do not scribble, overwrite. Okay, neat and clear. Because sometimes, you know, the presentation of the paper matters a lot to the examiner or to the evaluator. And especially English papers, we do look for that. Good handwriting, a good presentation. Uh, obviously, you know, it gets a lot of impression on the uh, evaluator. Follow the word limit. Don't forget to revise answers before submitting. And yes, as I said, be very careful, you know, when you are attempting the answers, word limit, uh, selecting the correct answer, do not get confused. That, okay, one I have written, oh my God, I don't know all the four answers. You cut it once again and you attempt the next one. But in many students, they do this. They have maybe question number one, B, they have selected. And they start writing the answers. They get stuck in one answer. Then they feel like, no, 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 B is not correct. I should do A. Then they cut the B and then they go for A. This happens when? When the children are not ready. When the children are not confident. Children are not ready with the whole syllabus what they want to write okay so uh, this is very important How, again use the additional 15 minutes as i said reading time very judiciously okay the first 15 minutes set the priority of answering now this is very very important very common question imani ma'am must be agreeing with me they keep on asking ma'am which section to start can we start with section c first can we start with section b first so they can start any section Okay, A, B, or C, they can do, but they will not change the sequence of the questions. Section B, if you are starting writing skill, you have to do all the four short writing task, long writing task in the same sequence. Okay, section C, if you are starting, 
it should not be like i am i complete the extract based questions and then again go to the next another section and then i make the whole thing you know confused so if whichever section they are attempting should be completed sequentially then move to section next section and next section sections can be any sections they can start no issues on that all right uh, choose the questions wisely as i said a very important step to score good marks now this we can tell them but the decision they have to take in the exam hall that is what we tell them in the life skills good decision maker problem solver we keep on doing all this right <clears throat> so decision they have to take attempt all the questions that is selected and don't leave any answers please please tell your students do not leave any answers whatever you know write something you never know out of five months. sometimes you know most of the students they are very afraid work with the long writing answers this um, long question answers they are very afraid and 120 to 150 words they cannot think what to write how to write they sometimes leave because they are scared and afraid to write so ask them whatever you know you write okay scoring and all we will see later but don't leave the answers five markers question six markers question cannot be left out it cannot be it, whatever you know you write at least 50% some marks you will be getting 2 3 4 whatever but don't leave the answers and space out each word properly handwriting should be legible this already we keep them telling throughout the year we have been telling them right that proper spacing and handwriting should be legible we should it should be understood by the evaluator because we don't know the paper will go to whom and who will be doing your corrections right it will not come to us that we know i know each and every child of my class so whatever i know how he writes the t i know how he writes the p so i can understand and i do the corrections but that evaluator doesn't know right which child is writing that so the handwriting should be very much uh, legible right and uh, tips and tricks again to score say no to selective studying some students were telling ma'am this chapter is difficult ma'am that poem is very difficult okay we will not read that you never know that you leave out that poem and the question comes from that poem only okay and and the other this another one the choice question is difficult for you so please do not do any selective study whatever is given try to be ready with all the chapters time management i'll tell you time management again 3 hours paper okay uh, what i suggest to my students is 45 minutes for the first section section a or if you are not so confident then you can give 1 hour for section a 1 hour for uh, section c literature and 45 minutes for writing skill all right so section a 1 hour section b 45 minutes and section c 1 hour that makes it 2 hour 45 minutes and last 15 minutes will be your revision time last minute don't write okay 5 minutes remaining and i'm still writing that means you are not prepared again you are not ready whenever you are doing the sample question papers at home i have already told my students that close doors windows tell your family members now i am sitting for solving the sample question paper put a clock or you know in your room uh, all the gadgets should be outside your mobile phone and everything okay without which you cannot i don't know i will i will talk on it later so everything should be outside you sit set your clock as per the timings 3 hours and then solve and increase your speed all right so first one hour section a that is reading 45 minutes section b that is writing and one hour for section c that is literature now it can vary depending on your confidence that how fast you can solve which section it can vary also but last 15 minutes please keep for revision okay neat and legible handwriting be careful and attentive while reading the questions and revise your answers before you submit the answer scripts that's very very important without revising please don't give when you are revising look that all the questions you have attempted with the question paper secondly check for your um, grammar mistakes check for the spelling errors okay any answer which you feel like some something else i have i must have written i have missed out that also you can add while you are doing the revision but don't write it at the last of the answer sheet write it there only with a star mark okay on the same page so in this way you should revise the last 15 minutes and then submit your answer script all right please remember that a correct answer that is filled with incorrect spellings takes away 
the actually the quality of that answer. All right, correct answer. You know the answer. You know the theme. You know everything about that chapter. Okay, vocabulary is also good, but your whole answer full of spelling errors. There are many papers like that also, which we have evaluated, where the answers are correct, but spelling errors are there. Obviously, the quality of the answer goes away. All right. Don't be entirely focused on guidebooks. This is, again, very um, important message for the learners. I must say, they just focus on the guidebooks and they are, the textbooks are kept away. Okay. So, thin, poor textbooks, they lie on the table till the last day. And that thick one, the guidebook, is there on their table. Please tell them that do not ignore the textbooks and the class notes that the teachers had given you. Give equal importance to all the three study materials. Because textbooks, sometimes guidebook, it is not there. But the guidebook, in the guidebook, you will not get the story in that way as it is there in the textbook. They only summarize or characters or plot, the theme, lots of questions they do give. So please do read the chapters from the textbooks, for the, especially for the extract-based questions. All right. Next, don't spend too much time writing very lengthy answers for questions that carry less marks. So for two markers question, for three markers question, for your reading section, one one mark answers, do not write too many things. Okay, spend that time instead on writing answers for questions that carry more marks and avoid crossing the word limit. As I said, it is just waste of time, extra things. Sometimes you keep repeating the things again and again and again, right? So these are some of the important tips which I have, I whatever I felt I have shared. Okay, and yes, do remember these two day, dates. Tell them again and again as an English educator, teacher, that Monday 27th is class 10 and Friday 24th class 12. They should have the timetable in front of them by now with all the dates written boldly. All right, so these two dates are also examination dates for us because if it is their exam, it is our exam again. Okay, until unless they come back, you know, they come back and they call the message that, ma'am, it was a great paper. I have really done well. Till that time, I am not satisfied. <clears throat> I, 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 whole day, I eagerly, I wait for their messages. And the previous night also, I feel like, oh my God, tomorrow's English paper. Still now, I feel the same thing. Okay. <laughs> when my students are giving. So I feel that, uh, you know, with all these tips, our students will be ready, confident, and yes, prepared to solve some sample question papers more and more sample question papers will make them more confident. Okay, time management and everything will be perfectly fine. To begin with, you can ask them to visit the website of whatever I told. It is there in the CBSC website as well. All right, so uh, they can visit the website, download the sample question papers along with the marking scheme. In the marking scheme, everything is mentioned that what all is required and uh, weightage and all, right? And then with this, I just come to the last slide, that is confidence is preparation. So here we are sitting to build confidence in our students and learners. We have to build, tell them that you can do, you must do, you have to do. Okay, these three things we have to tell them and everything, rest of the things, whatever is beyond our control, we don't know. Confidence is within us, which we have to prepare. And with this, I come to the end of the session and I have one worksheet, which I thought if, uh, Himani ma'am, if we have time, can I share that worksheet, which we can solve together? Sure, ma'am. Uh, I, I think Salam, sir, we can go ahead with it. Yes, ma'am, yes, ma'am, please. Yes, ma'am. Okay, okay. Just, just. Just a minute. I think my mistake. Yeah. 
Yeah, ma'am, is it visible? Yes, ma'am. It's a Word document. Yes, yes. So this is one passage which I have just selected so that we can solve it together. So as I said, first step is to skim. So let's skim the passage. Himaniwan, can you please read? Yes, ma'am. I'll start. Why be a teacher? The short answer is easy. To witness the diversity of growth in young people and their joy in learning. To encourage lifelong learning, both for yourself and for others. To experience the challenge of devising and doing interesting, exciting activities for the young. There is more to be said about the value of teaching. Consider, for instance, the young people referred to above. In one class, they could be six years old. In another, they could be 16 or even older. They could be rich, poor, or somewhere in between. There are all sorts of possibilities, but whoever the particular students are, they will have potential as human beings, possibly not yet realized, that can contribute to society. A teacher's job, in fact, a teacher's privilege is to help particular young people to realize their potential. As a teacher, you will be able to lay the groundwork for lifelong learning. You will often work with students long enough to convey a crucial message. There is much in life to learn, more than any one teacher or school can provide in a lifetime. Whatever you teach, its immensity can be source of curiosity, wonder, and excitement. Learning, when properly understood, is never ending though it often focuses on short-term immediate concerns. As a teacher, you will have an advantage not shared by every member of society, the excuse not only to teach valuable knowledge and skills, but to point students beyond what they will be able to learn from you. Whatever you teach, you will be able to feel the satisfaction of designing and orchestrating complex activities that communicate new ideas and skills effectively. The challenge is attractive to many teachers because that is where they exercise judgment and artistry freely and frequently. Teaching will need you to know how to explain ideas clearly, to present new materials in a sensible sequence and at an appropriate pace, to point out connections between their new learning and their prior experiences. The complexity of classroom life guarantees that teaching never needs to get boring. Something new and exciting is bound to occur when you least expect it. A student shows an insight that you never expected to see or fails to show one that you were sure he had. After teaching a particular learning objective several times, you realize that you understand it differently than the first time you taught it. The job never stays the same. It evolves continually. As long as you keep teaching, you will have a job with novelty. 431 words. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am. So I think like she has done both the things, skimming and scanning together. <laughs> the way you read, ma'am. <laughs> okay. So Very interesting. The first question. Yeah, yeah, it was. Which of the which of these best describes the organization of the passage? If the participants want, I can show it once again so that they can go through it. And then we can have a quick MCQ session quickly. Done. Can we move with the questions?
Okay, so the first question, which of these best describes the organization of the passage? Comparing and contrasting information from different sources, bringing in personal accounts of different people to make a point, introducing certain points and explaining them in subsequent paragraphs, or reminiscing about events that happened in the past to support the details given. So I want my participants to write the answers in the chat box. Madam Swapna Admirad had said option C, and same goes with Madam Neetu Agarwal. Absolutely correct. Okay, option C, correct answer. Introducing certain points and explaining them in subsequent paragraphs, okay, in halves, in details. Second one, what are the authors most likely referring to when they say short-term immediate concerns? Okay, so learning when properly understood is never ending, even though it often focuses on short-term immediate concerns. So what is the meaning? The excessive focus on quick memorization of facts, the need to create lesson plans to cater to different grade levels, the emphasis on learning concepts with a clear understanding of them, the need to have meticulous plans to help students develop learning, self-learning habits. Answer. Madam Nishta, Alex, and Madam Reena Anthony, they have said option D. So is uh, Ma'am Soumya and Ma'am Anjali also saying. Um, option B seems to be the common answer here. Okay. Any other answers are coming? We have D in succession. Mm -hmm. I think so you can once again see the question. show the question, yes. Um, Ma'am Salma has said option A. Learning when properly understood is never ending, even though it often focuses on short-term immediate concerns. It is given in paragraph two. And what is this term used as? Okay, if, when they say short-term immediate concerns, what are the authors most likely referring to? So it is mostly referring to the excessive focus on quick memorization of facts. Okay, so that is short-term immediate concerns that we will quickly memorize the facts and that is uh, what the answer is. Okay, option A. So those who have given the answers, congratulations. Question number three, what is the meaning of orchestrating in the above line? You will be able to feel the satisfaction of designing and orchestrating complex activities. So what is the meaning of orchestrating here? Analyzing and evaluating something beforehand, planning and organizing something carefully, explaining the difficulty in doing something or introducing something spontaneously. Yeah. Mm, Ma'am, B seems to be a common answer, but we also have yeah. mm -hmm. one C coming up. All right. Orchestrating complex activities means planning and organizing something very carefully. Option B. All right. Next, by instilling lifelong learning in children, teachers can ensure that students share innovative ideas with the teachers in class, understand the importance of schools and colleges, respect their teachers for their roles in shaping their future, or build confidence to acquire skills and adapt to different challenges in life. What's the meaning? What we can do? Um, D seems to be the common answer amongst everybody. Yeah. This one, right? I'm D. Yes. D. Yeah. Yeah. Build, Build confidence, confidence to acquire skills. Yes, yes. Absolutely correct. Next, which of these conveys the meaning of artistry as used in the above line? Because that is where they exercise judgment and artistry the most freely and frequently. So what is the meaning here? The ability to follow something exceptionally, the ability to create something new and valuable, the ability to appreciate something wholeheartedly, or the ability to criticize something in a constructive manner. Ma'am, the answer that is common amongst everyone is uh, B, the ability to create something new. But we've also mm -hmm. got some D, the ability to criticize something in a constructive manner. Okay. 
uh, actually um, something you know new and valuable artistry we say okay option b the yes. most freely and frequently constructive manner is also uh, correct in some way but criticize what is there so it is not actually going with this paragraph huh, right now next one which of these options supports the above statement that a teacher's job, in fact, a teacher's privilege is to help particular young people to realize their potential. As a teacher, you will have an advantage not shared by every member of society. Teaching will need you to know how to explain ideas clearly to present new materials in a sensible sequence. After teaching a particular learning objective several times, you realize that you understand it differently and the job stays this never stays the same. It evolves continually. So, which of these options supports the statement? Four statements, four uh, options are there, and this is the statement. So, which one is supporting this? Ma'am, A seems to be the answer that is being written in the chat box. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. We have yes. got one D also. Right we have got two Ds D also. D. Okay. The job never stays the same. Mixed answers. All right. A teacher's job, in fact, a teacher's privilege is to help particular young people to realize their potential. Now, if two answers are there, let's see. Option A, as a teacher, you will have an advantage not shared by every member of the society. And that's why it's a privilege. All right. And D says the job never stays the same. It evolves continually. But here, uh, you know, the, if you see the statement, it is talking about the teacher's job, its village, and uh, what is the responsibility, helping the young people to realize their potential. So somewhere, a most appropriate answer, if you see in between these two options, it's option A, right, where it is an advantage not shared by every member of the society, right? Now, question number seven, which of these can be a summary of the passage? This will be easy, I think, for all of us. The passage uses empty facts to glorify the teachers and their role in society. The passage introduces teachers to different ways of creating engaging activities. The passage describes the role of a teacher in developing the foundational skills of a child or the passage compares the role of teachers with those of other professions in nation building. B. Ma'am, we are getting a lot of uh, Cs in the chat box. So. <laughs> Most of the educators are going with option yes, C. Yes, absolutely correct. The passage describes the role of a teacher in developing the foundational skills of a child. NEP is talking about foundational skills right now. Okay, very soon we are going to implement it. I think 2025 most probably. Okay, so foundational skill first and then middle school and then secondary foundation should be strong uh, as it is five years we are giving for that. Select the option that correctly explains the relationship between one and two. Now, there are two statements given here, and you have to find out which correctly explains the relationship. Learners come from all walks of, of life and display great diversity in classrooms. The role of a teacher is extremely challenging as it requires them to cater to the different needs of each child. This type of question most of the time confuses the students. They, they, they are confused and incorrect answers we find in these type of questions so which one is actually showing the relationship two furthers the meaning of one statement one is the opposite of statement two statement one is the cause of statement two or statement two negates statement one negates means rules out c seems to be the common answer in the chat box one is the cause, cause of, of two. two. Yes. Two. Yes. Option C is the correct answer. Uh, thank you so much. Those who are writing actively in the chat box. Thank you. Thank you so much. Learners come from all walks of life and display great diversity in classrooms. Fine. But what is the cause? Because the role of a teacher is extremely challenging at that time to cater to the different needs of each child. Right. So one is the cause of two. Ninth one, according to the details given in the passage, select the option that highlights the mandatory qualities that a teacher must have. Creative, quick thinker, avid reader, emotionally mature, believes in a strict routine, should be well versed in various languages. We can write all the six, but we don't have options. <laughs> so is it one, two, and four? Uh, 
uh, is it one, three, and five? Is it two, four, and five, or four, five, and six? Mandatory qualities as a teacher. We have one answer from an educator. Christy Matthew says mm -hmm. A. A seems to be the common option that everybody's writing for this month. One, two, and four. Maliga, ma'am, can we wind up with the 10th question? We are running short of time. Yes, sir. Please. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. In the last question. Yeah. So the answer, correct answer for this option D. Okay. Four, five, and six. Right, ma'am. Emotionally mature, believes in a strict routine and should be well versed according to the passage in various languages. All right. And the last question, which of these is a valid conclusion according to the given line? Something new and exciting is bound to occur just when you least expect it. Ma'am, uh, C seems to be the common ground here. C option. Teachers should look out for different learning opportunities for themselves. Something new and exciting is bound to occur just when you least expect it. So we have to be ready for different type of learning opportunities for ourselves. So option D is the correct answer. So, you know, these this, this was just an example. So this type of exercises or uh, comprehension can be practiced with the students. So with this, I come to the end of the session. Just and stop sharing the screen. Thank you so much. Thank you so much to all the participants who has joined me. Any questions, ma'am, over to you. Thank you so much, ma'am, for adding on to our intellectual pursuits. Dear participants, if you have any queries, you are requested to virtually raise your hand and uh, we'll give you a chance to ask a question. Okay, so we'll unmute you. Himani, ma'am, there was a common question, like whether students are allowed to mark allowed to write on the question paper. Yes, yes. sir, I noted that. I think first we can take that question. Ma'am, there is this uh, question which has been uh, posted time and again on the chat box that are the students allowed to write in the question papers? You know, there are times when they probably scribble little answers or they put these tick marks. Are they allowed to do that? No, ma'am, they are not allowed to write on the question paper. Only for reading comprehension passages, as I said, with a pencil, light stroke, they can underline the keywords, only the keywords, but no answers to be written on the question paper. MCQs, like sometimes the children tick mark or the circle, A, B, C, D. So all these things they are not allowed to do. Thank you so much, ma'am. Uh, we have ma'am Uma who would like to ask a question. Uh, yes, ma'am. Yes, Good evening, ma'am. Ma I just wanted to ask Good you, evening. in case they exceed the number of words by 15 or 20, for a three marker, that is 40 to 50 words, if they happen to write around 60 to 65 words, what are the repercussions? Is it that the marks will be cut or something or? Uh... No, 10 to 15 words, ma'am, it is okay. We do not deduct the marks. Yeah, I know, cannot but it cannot be like uh, it cannot be like a six marker undoubtedly but uh, okay no. and ma'am one more thing you very clearly told us that they can attempt all the 10 questions in 12 questions in grammar and any of the 10 will be selected uh, but but when it comes to mcq in literature if they answer both the questions like both the questions from section a and uh, if they get uh, four in one and the three in the other is the four four mark accepted or they will be correcting only one mcq Okay, Uma ma'am, for grammar section, as I said, all the answers they can attempt, right? Yeah. And uh, in case the child is, you know, making two mistakes out of uh, 12, he is uh, writing 10 correct answers, he is getting 10 out of 10, right? Yeah. But uh, in case of literature, if they're attempting both the answers, like question number one, A and B, both they're yeah. attempting. In that case, the first one will be taken. Whether he is scoring four or three doesn't matter. Okay. The first answer will be taken for the evaluation. Okay. Okay. Second and, one will not be checked at all. Thank you very much, ma'am. Yeah. And the last question is, uh, when they um, when they are writing the letter, should the word respected be written or it's only sir slash ma'am? Only sir. Only sir. No respected also. No, no, no. 
not required okay okay sir thanks sir already much. means respected okay okay sure, sir respected. thanks a lot <laughs> okay yeah. thanks a lot ma'am thank you ma'am it was a wonderful session thank you <laughs> ma'am next we have uh, madam sudeep could you please unmute yourself yes ma'am sudeep ma'am yes Sudeepa ma, you can ask your query. I think uh, Sudeepa ma, you can ask your query. You are unmuted. I've asked to unmute. Okay, I think there could be an issue at that end. Uh, Ma'am Meena would like to ask. Yeah, happy evening, ma'am. Happy evening, Magna. Yes. Uh, yes. My doubt is, ma'am, how to guide students to write the conversation answers, like long answers. They are based on conversation. Mm -hmm. so See, based on conversation. Yes, ma'am. For conversation answers, uh, usually the characters will be given, right? So first yes. thing is they should know how to write a conversation in a dialogue format. This is the first step. So alternate ways, the two characters should be having a conversation. The names of each and every character with the colon should be there. The sentence should start with a capital letter. In case of conversation, there should be uh, different types of sentences, not only statements. Okay. It, it, in a very formal way, question mark, exclamatory sentences, interrogative sentences, such type of sentences should be there to make it more lively. Okay. It should not be blunt like what? Uh, one after the other statements are being written. Now the theme, how they are writing. Theme will be mostly based, as I said, on the lesson. Suppose on the face of it, what is the theme? Overcoming, uh, sorry, it's about friendship. It is about, again, building confidence. Okay, what if the challenges are physical challenges or any other challenges? We have to overcome that and build confidence and face the world. So theme will be given. Characters will be given. They have to frame the sentences as if the, both the characters are talking. And lots of different types of sentences, short sentences. Ask them not to make it too lengthy, each and every dialogue for the characters. Then it, it, it uh, whole flow goes. So short, simple sentences and it should be lively. Okay, that is how they should attempt. Like how they are starting, ma'am, like how are you, like this and all. So is it the right yeah. way? Okay, yes, yes, absolutely fine. It, absolutely fine. Hello, how are you? I have not seen you for many. As normally we converse with okay. each other similar okay. to that if it is see that situation will also be given that if they are meeting after some time or they are friends or depending on what is the relationship also right yes like if the relationship is showing like one person is a student and the other is a teacher then that time it, it cannot be hi how are you or hello how are you hi is a wrong word we do not use in formal writing yes, okay hello we use yes. and uh in case so relationship also matters suppose it's a dialogue between a son or a mother so in that case you have to take care that what type of sentences i will use two friends are having conversation a student and teacher having conversation then those vocabulary words should be taken care of by the student okay. ma'am ma one more doubt ma'am in many of the reference book uh, salutation is given after the uh, sub sorry subject is given after the salutation like when I just browse it, it is like American pattern and British pattern of writing letters. So mm -hmm. uh, this guide, ma'am, like students are also confused. Like they use many of the reference book. Then they ask, ma'am, what is the yeah. correct pattern? Then we need to write the subject before the session or after salutation. See, what we teach to our students is, you know, first the subject, then the salutation. Okay. okay. But if you see the, that is the correct way to write. First, the subject and then the salutation as we were practicing just now. But in the answer key of CBSC marking scheme, if you see, they have written both the options. Okay. Subject and salutation slash salutation and subject. Both are so acceptable. For both, yes. Okay. So both, both are acceptable. Okay. As per the marking scheme from CBSC. Right. But the commonly uh, used technique is first to write the salutation uh, sorry, first the subject and, and then the, the salutation. Yes. Um, I yes, think to avoid confusion, we can tickle a pattern to all our students so that you yes, know yes. they're all on the same platform. Yeah. Yeah. I, that is how we have to, Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much, ma'am. That is from my side. Thank you. Thank it you. Thank you.
thank you so much yeah thank you thank you so much dear educators if, if you have any query you can raise your hands virtually and you will be unmuted yes ma'am chaudhary could you please unmute yourself good evening ma'am good evening everyone uh, my question is like uh, in the quest sample papers also for the section c part they have given uh, names of the chapters after the questions mm -hmm. so that will be given for the students in all the paper in cbse yes. and as we don't have the blueprint uh, so like we cannot focus on one particular chapter because there is no blueprint so we can't tell the students that uh, the, from this chapter you need to learn for th three mark question or from this chapter you have to learn six mark question so how can we just yeah. come out for it uh, yeah shazia ma'am good evening yes ma'am for section c as you said there is no blueprint for like uh, from which chapter three markers will come or from which chapter six markers will come as we have for science and social yeah. science all this <clears throat> subjects Yes, English we don't have, and yes. that is why I'm telling that you know they have to be very thorough with each and every chapter, ma'am. We cannot yes. tell them like uh, selective study cannot be done. That short questions will be coming from this chapter, and long will be coming from that chapter. But yes, what is it that we can do for uh, for long question answers? That the theme for every chapter should be learned by the students, should be memorized and. uh very clear with the students that what is the theme for each and every chapter because for long question answers they have to write the answers then and there in the exam hall they are creating it ma'am they are oh. not memorizing it or they are not <clears throat> ready with the answers they are creating on spot but if the theme is ready that okay this is talking about friendship or this is talking about uh importance of nature like in lencho's chapter or uh, this is talking about um, the, what is the role of a scientist so you if the theme is ready they they can frame any kind of answers but blueprint is not there so no selective study ma'am they have to study all the chapters thoroughly okay thank you very much ma'am thank you ma'am ma'am neetu could you please unmute yourself good evening ma'am am i audible yes uh, ma'am i have only two short questions can children do rough work uh, while preparing for long answers because they are saying many a times we start thinking and the thinking process ends in the mid and can we make a rough uh, something like we do in maths in the margin with pencil yes yes good good evening nitu ma'am very good question very good question okay so uh, see in case when we are solving the answers or when we are writing the answers for english paper there left hand side there is a margin and we ask the students that outside the margin you write the main question number and inside the margin you write the sub questions all right so in case of short question answers they will not face a problem but in long question answer as you are telling they are creating one after the other organization relevancy is important on the right hand side the column where we do the part marking on the right hand side with bullet points they can jot down the keywords okay with the pencil yes. they can jot down the keywords write the whole answer and if time is remaining they can erase if no time is there then they can leave it also as it is all right they can do yes ma'am no yes ma'am thank you very much ma'am Ma one more question very small question ma'am yes ma'am uh, yeah, yeah. ma many a times uh, only one address is given in the letter so students what they ask that can we write a personal name can we write our personal address for example now we belong to a very remote place here in maharashtra so can they use their uh, like can we use a personal address over there okay ma'am uh, this question is also very important again neetu ma'am both the questions very very important okay the second question like absolutely not okay they will not be writing their personal address or their name or their friend's name or their teacher's name sometimes we get teacher's name also in the notice okay submit this details details to their english teacher's name is there so absolutely not tell your students not to write in case the names are not given in the question paper they can be ready with any fictional name one okay. or two fictional name you give them beforehand okay one a uh, male name and a female name should be given beforehand and okay. that fictional name can be used okay as well as address but their own address phone number school's name should not be used anywhere in the answer sheet okay thank you very very thank important ma'am yes, little ma embarrassing yes. but uh, today i got this opportunity uh, ma'am my students always ask me ma'am we get stuck at uh, 97 98 
so is it really possible that uh, these students get 100 on 100, really? Because I, I belong to a very remote place in Maharashtra, where in uh, very little exposure we get, ma'am. Although I'm trying my best. First Yes, ma'am. Neetu, ma'am, first of all, there is no remote place as such. When we are here, hundred and uh, I mean, when we joined, it was more. Now the number has come down. They are all, I think, bored now and tired. They have left. <laughs> okay. But the thing is, right, uh, there is no remote place. When we are sitting here connecting to each other and you <laughs> and I get learning from each other, giving it to the students, where is remote, ma'am? There is no remote corner, I feel. <laughs> With the help of technology and Salam Sir's uh, great yes, initiative yes. and the whole Bharat Saudi team, we are all together. I never felt like Himani ma'am is in Delhi or I'm in West Bengal. Okay, we are so close to each other. Gee, ma right, this is first thing. Second thing is, ma'am, absolutely. You tell your students, 100 is definitely possible. possible. Okay, there is no, never you say that, okay, 99, not out. Nine, you have you can score 100. There is no no question on that. Okay, Gee, that one mark Gee. also you can get. Okay, ma'am. And, and uh, uh, anytime you can talk to me, my phone number, my email id is with sir you can take it from uh, salam sir okay we can talk thank you. all right Gee, thank you ma'am okay, thank you so thank much, you so much. Thank, thank you thank you thank you, you. yes uma ma'am you can yeah, um, uh, 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 again sorry ma'am uh, continuing with neetu ma'am's uh, question instead of the fictional name they can write xyz, XYZ or and abc or something yeah. like that yes ma'am yes ma'am that also oh. can be written. Now we tell them Mr. XYZ or Miss ABC, yeah. you know, something yeah, yeah, of yeah. that's what they can cover. Right, right, right. So I was just reconfirming that. Thanks a lot, ma'am. Yes, yes, ma'am. It can be written. Salma, ma'am, could you please unmute yourself? Yeah, good evening, everyone. I have a quick question uh, for ma'am. Ma'am, in reply to invitation, when the chief guest is replying, can he reply in the first person or it should be given in the third person? And another question is that if they are, if it is a first person reply, then the entire formal letter has to be written as an acceptance. Okay, ma'am. So ma'am, uh, two questions you have asked, right? At first person mm -hmm. or third person. Whenever we are replying to any invitation, we uh, tell our students to reply it in third person. Okay. Yes. First person, we never say that I will not be able to come or I am. Uh, this is the work I have. And this, due to this reason, I'm, I'll not be able to, uh, you know, be there. So usually we do not ask our students to write it in first person, third person only. All right. In case of letter format also, uh, yeah, it, this is card format. In letter format also, if you're writing it in, first person then the whole format should be in letter format somewhere it is card and somewhere it is a uh, letter it should not be like that the, the whole format should be in a letter form and then in that case you can you can write but in case of card format you have to write it in third person ma'am no ma'am this question was not regarding the card format i was asking uh, for the formal invitation we have card format and we have when we write directly to the celebrities or the uh, uh, you know chief guests wherein we invite them to preside over the uh, function so here in that case will the celebrity or the concerned person write directly in first person or his secretary is supposed to write and it is a denial right i'm denying the invitation either denial or acceptance so uh, will acceptance. it be by so, third person no it will be third person always Okay, all right. So, yeah. celebrity, the uh, two guests will not write directly. All right. No, no, okay. no, no. Okay, thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Uma, ma'am, you have a, a query. Uh, kindly unmute yourself. You're not audible. Yeah, yeah sorry, ma'am. Ma'am, when we start, when the board started with an analytical, analytical writing paragraph uh, during the pandemic, they started with pie graphs, bar graphs, line graphs, and all those things. And then, unfortunately, yes. they didn't have the exam. And then last no. year, I think we moved on to flow charts. And this year, they have moved on to SWOT analysis and for and against. Mm. So, uh, you know, there are a lot of analytical writings right yes. now. So, uh, in which are the topics you think the students should mostly focus upon right now? Because... Uh, we yeah. have done the bar graphs, line graphs, pie charts, SWOT analysis, everything. But, uh, you know, yes, for a few, it gets a little too much because they are more comfortable with the 
graph kind of a thing but in hmm. the board paper they have asked what analysis and they have asked that for and against uh, on a particular topic so yes yes that is a sample paper in this yeah, sample yeah, paper yeah, they have yeah, asked in yeah. that way okay where the this whole table is given with yeah, analysis yes, yes, and yes. then another one is given and in the practice book you know there is a mixture of many things you know they have the many. maps also they have the pie charts also they have the hmm. flow charts also so hmm, hmm. so where you think the so children ma say, okay. yes ma'am so uh, you know there are uh, two types of analytical paragraph one can be where already a, a you know a statement is given or a situation is given you know or an argument is given that that will be one type of analytical paragraph i got that ma'am i got that analyze. i got that hmm. but what i am asking you is will the older ones also be asked or they, yes. they'll be focusing only on the swot analysis and the current one which is given in the board sample paper no we have to be ready with any kind of topics oh, okay the, that is you mean yes, to say the, the bar graphs line graphs anything bar graph the yes the charts also because it is mentioned there statistical data okay all right in the syllabus if you see the beginning of the session when yeah, it yeah, was yeah. released by cbsc there it is mentioned like it can be statistical data it can be charts it can be analysis like it is given in the sample question paper it can be argumentative paragraphs as well but argumentative paragraphs are again difficult for the students yes okay so we have to be ready with all the types of uh, analytical paragraph ma okay ma okay okay yes, ma thank you thank you yes yes thank you ma'am ma shall we wind up yes sir sir i'll just move with the thank you address i would like to extend our gratefulness and appreciation for madam malika sen for broadening our horizons and regaling us with boundless discourse your participants kindly note the link for certificate and feedback form has been already posted you are requested to fill up the form with all the necessary details i himani bakshi along with the cbsc bharat sahodya complex would like to thank madam sen once again for her gracious presence and an enriching experience also i would like to thank dr abdul salam for his magnanimous support and guidance thank you sir for such great opportunity a big thank you also to the technical team arun mohan sir and arafat sir for yet again a flawless execution of the session and most important importantly thank you a million thanks to all the participants for their enthusiasm thank you so much over to you salam sir thank you himani ma'am as always your uh, expertise is greatly helpful to each and every one learning from the best sir. thank you similarly similarly with uh, malliga sen ma'am i don't know how this nearly two and a half hours you were sitting with us <laughs> thank you sir i think my camera is experiencing some problem right sir i thought you were time traveling i don't know uh, anyway because there were flashes of light yes 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 <laughs> no sir anyway thank you so much ma'am we are gra very grateful to ma'am uh, you ma'am So, uh, because definitely this is going to help a lot of you know teachers and students. So definitely you know our efforts will be very useful, and uh, definitely we can see that students will score better marks because of your efforts. So thank you so much. Uh, we'll uh, thank you, sir. We will meet again, right? With some more yes, topics sir. and all. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you, each and everyone. Yes, yes. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Thank, thank you, you thank sir. you so much good night, good night. Good thank night. you bye bye good night good night bye sir thank you good night